Hello students. Today we will start with a new chapter that is the structure of atom. So our topic is structure of atom. Now, before we move to the structure of atom, the very first thing that we are to know here that what do we mean by word this atom? So, if I am to define the atom, so this atom is defined as the smallest particle of an element which participates in a chemical reaction. So, this is the smallest particle. For example, to understand this, if I write the reaction for the synthesis of hydrogen chloride, so for the synthesis of hydrogen chloride, we take the molecule of hydrogen and react this with the molecule of chlorine. This reaction occurs in the presence of ultraviolet light and by the reaction we get two molecules of hydrogen chloride. If I talk about the starting unit for this molecule hydrogen chloride synthesis so as the starting reactant we have taken the molecule of hydrogen and the molecule of chlorine those three uh, these two molecules are diatomic molecule which are made by two atoms of the individual such as this hydrogen molecule is made by two hydrogen atoms that can be represented like this but whenever it participates to form this molecule hydrogen chloride so these so this molecule of hydrogen dissociates to form two hydrogen atoms and here each hydrogen atom react to form react with each chlorine atom that we get by the synthesis of that we get by the dissociation of chlorine molecule and when this hydrogen atom combine with the atom of chlorine so the resultant molecule we get as the hydrogen chloride molecule so here we can see that the participating unit of this chemical reaction is the atom and not the molecule and that is why this atom is defined as the smallest particle that participates in a chemical reaction and in this whole chapter we are to study about this atom the structure of atom and about the history of this atom now if we talk about the composition of this atom so this is not so that this atom is the smallest individual unit every atom is made by many particles but out of these the three fundamental particles are too important and here we will study about only them these particles are named as electrons protons and neutrons now since every atom is made by these three fundamental particles that are electron proton and neutron so before we go for the further study first of all we are to know that what are the properties for these fundamental particles now here we will not study the properties of each particle separately we will study the properties of these particle in a comparative form and to study the properties now we will make a table for these now the very first column for this table it indicates the property about which we are talking the second column will indicate the behavior of electron according to this property in the third column we will study the properties of protons and in the last one we will study the behavior of neutrons the very first property that we are to study here is the name of discover electrons were discovered by the scientist named j j thompson protons were discovered by goldstein and neutrons it was discovered by the scientist james chadwick now sometimes it is asked that the, that tell the name of the experiment due to which electrons protons and neutrons were discovered so j j thompson conducted the experiment that is known as cathode ray experiment and in this cathode ray experiment he discovered the fundamental particle electron goldstein was performing the same experiment but with some modification and this experiment was named as canal ray experiment or canal tube experiment and in this experiment he was he found something positively charged particle in an atom and this positively charged particle was further named as proton by rutherford 
these neutrons were discovered by james chadwick and this these neutrons were the result of a nuclear reaction james chadwick was performing a nuclear reaction a nuclear experiment and in this nuclear reaction he found that a neutral particle is there and he named this particle as neutron so this was the name of discoverer with their experiment now we will not go through the ex these experiments in detail this with this experiment we will be studying further now here we will move to our second property that is the nature of charge here we are to see that out of these if any one is charged particle or not and if it is charged so what is the nature of charge on it out of these electrons are negatively charged particles protons as the name starts from p so the charge on them is always positive and these are positively charged particles neutron it starts from n and by this we can learn we can uh, memorize this as the name starts from n so it has no charge on it and those particles which has no which have no charge on them are termed as neutral particle so this neutron is electrically neutral now in the third property we will study that what is the magnitude of charge on them so here we are to study about the magnitude of charge electron has the charge and the value is 1.6 into electron has the charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb that can be represented by capital c the proton it has the same charge and the magnitude is same as the electron was having and the value is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb again but the different is electron is negatively charged particle so with the magnitude we can also indicate the minus sign with this and the complete value will be minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb while the charge of proton with the complete value will be plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb as i have said that neutron has no charge on it so the magnitude can be written as zero it has zero charge on this now further we are to go for the fourth property and that is again the charge on them here before we go to the property first we are to understand about two different terms and to understand these two different terms first of all we will take one example such as if i talk about a class and it this class the three students i am going to indicate that i am going to indicate this by a b and c if i talk about the weight of these students and if i say that the weight of a is 20 kg the weight of b is 40 kg and the weight of c is exact 60 kg so here i have the, i have told the exact value of their weight and whenever we tell something exact about any value so this kind of value is known as absolute value now one, uh, here is one more way to indicate their weight if i take the ratio for their weight is then the ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 3 now if i am to indicate the weight of c then i can represent this by two way if i say so that the weight of c is 60 kg so that is the correct representation and if i compare the weight of c with a and if i say that the weight of c is thrice as compared to the weight of a so that is again a way of representation for the weight of c this kind of representation when we use the comparative value of the weight or the ratio of weight then this kind of representation is known as relative weight so whenever we use something comparison for, to whenever we use the comparative value to represent something then this kind of representation is known as relative representation and here to represent the charge we will use now the relative charge to give the value of electron proton and neutron before this we have seen the exact value of the charge of electron proton and neutron so this exact value of charge can be termed as absolute charge and now here we will study about the comparative value for their charge and this kind of comparative value will be known as relative charge for these fundamental particle as we can see that the charge of electron and proton is same so if we take the ratio for this then the ratio will be 1 is to 1 
if i indicate the nature of this charge also then the value will be minus 1 for electron and plus 1 for neutron and neutron is at zero charge since it is electrically neutral so this is the relative charge for these fundamental particle now we will go through the mass for these particles if we talk about the weight of these fundamental particle so here first we talk about their exact weight and this kind of weight as we have studied is known as absolute weight now if we talk about the weight of electron so the exact value for the weight of proton weight of electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg while in case of proton the value is approx 1.673 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg in case of neutron the value is approximately equal to the weight of proton and the value is 1.675 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg now if we go for the comparison for the weight of these fundamental particle so we can see that the degree of the weight of electron is 10 to the power minus 31 while in case of proton and neutron the value is 10 to the power minus 27 as the value is 10 to the power minus 27 is greater as compared to 10 to the power minus 31 so we can say that the mass of electron is very very lesser as compared to the weight of proton and neutron out of these proton and neutron if i am to compare that which one is heavier so we can see that the degree is same for these two particle but the value is differ by 0.002 here for the proton the value is 1.673 while for neutron the value is 1.675 so neutron it is little much heavier as compared to the proton and the correct comparison for this weight is electron is the least heavier particle while the neutron is the heaviest fundamental particle for an atom so this was for the absolute weight weight for this particle now we will see the relative weight for these particles as we have seen that the weight of electron and proton is comparatively equal and the value is greater as compared to the weight of electron so here we will indicate the relative weight for the proton and as neutron as 1 and now we will compare the weight of electron to get the relative weight of electron now if i take the weight of electron and compare this with the weight of proton then the value will 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 divided by 1.673 into 10 to the power minus 27 if we solve this then we will find that the weight of electron is approx 1 by 18 37 times lesser as compared to the weight of proton so that is the relative value, relative weight for the electron it is 1 by 1837 the relative weight for proton and neutron is approximately equal and it is given as 1 so this is for the relative weight now we are to see that how these electrons protons and neutrons can be symbolized now every time these electrons protons and neutrons cannot be represented by their full name so we give them a short representation to use them further and this symbolic representation is like this since the electron starts with the alphabet e so it is symbolized by small e the two very basic fundamental properties for this electron is the charge and the weight of electron and the charge is represented at the left hand corner at the as the subscript the relative charge of electron is minus 1 so it is written as the subscript at the left hand side and the relative mass of electron is 1 by 1837 this value is approx 0 so it is represented as e minus 1 0 now to represent proton we use the small p alphabet and the relative charge of proton is plus 1 so it is written as the subscript the relative mass of proton is 1 so it is written as the superscript for this symbol the neutron is symbolized by small n the relative charge of neutron is 0 since it is electrically neutral since the relative weight of neutron is 1 so the complete representation for neutron is n01 so that is the symbolic representation for this electron proton and neutron and here in this chapter further 
Besides of writing the complete name for these fundamental particles, we will be using these symbols. So that is for the properties of electrons, protons and neutrons. Now we are to see the distribution of these particles in an atom. If we talk about the arrangement of these fundamental particles in an atom, so out of these three, the last two one, that is proton and neutron, they are situated at the center of an atom and this center part of an atom is named as nucleus. This term was given by the scientist Rutherford. Later on, we will be dealing about those experiments by which, the Rutherford, by which Rutherford concluded that the proton and neutron are situated in nucleus. Here we will only the in, we will only use the term nucleus here and this nucleus since it contains the positively charged proton and neutron it has no charge on this that is zero charge on this so the total charge on nucleus is positive charge due to the presence of positively charged proton so it is symbolized by this kind of positive symbol that is present at the center of an atom. The last fundamental particle that is electron, this electron continuously keep on revolving around the nucleus in the circular path and these circular paths are known as shells or orbits. So this is the circular path for an electron in which it is not in the stationary position, it continuously revolve around the nucleus. And this circular path as I said is known as shell or orbit. This circular path is associated with a fixed amount of energy and since it has a fixed amount of energy, so this circular path is also named as energy level. In an atom, for the distribution of electron, a lots of circular paths are there where the electrons can be arranged and these circular paths to differentiate from each other are designated by a different kind of symbol such as the nearmost circular path or the nearmost shell to the nucleus is designated as K alphabet. The second, the second shell is termed as L shell. The third one is known as M shell. The fourth shell is designated by the alphabet N and the later on is known as O shell. After this, if we are to indicate, if we are to give the symbolic representation for these shell, then we can use the alphabetical order, such as after the O shell, the next shell will be P shell, the next one will be Q and so on. So this is how we represent these shells in the alphabetical form and these alphabetical symbols or these alphabetical representation will be used when we will be writing the electronic configuration for these atoms. So this is the arrangement of nuclear, this is the arrangement of fundamental particles in an atom. Now if we talk about the total comparison for the size of nucleus and the size of atom. So the size of nucleus since it is a circular area so we can compare the size by knowing the radius of nucleus. The radius of nucleus is approx in the range of 10 power minus 15 meter. Since 1 Fermi meter is equal to 10 power minus 15 meter. So besides of writing 10 power minus 15 meter, we can also write that the radius of nucleus is 1 Fermi meter. It is the approximate value for the radius. All the nucleus of different atom, they have the approximately equal radius and the value is 1 Fermi meter. Now, if I talk about the size of atom, so it is also, it can also be compared by knowing the radius of atom and the radius of atom is approximately comes in the range of 10 power minus 10 meter or it can be termed as 1 armstrong. If we talk about the ratio for the radius of nucleus and the ratio of atom, then it is sometimes asked in the NTSC exams. So we can find the ratio, the ratio of radius of atom divided by the ratio, radius of nucleus, the value is 10 power minus 10 divided by 10 power minus 15. On solving this, we will find the, that the value is 10 power 5. We can also write this that the radius of atom is equal to 10 power 5 times greater as compared to the radius of nucleus. So that is the ratio for their radius. And by this we can see that the atom is too much 
atom is too much greater as compared to the radius as compared to the size of nucleus so that is for their size now further we are to study that how can we find that how many fundamental particles are there in an atom now so so here we are to see that how can we calculate the number of electron proton and neutron in an atom for the calculation of electron proton and neutron here we will be dealing up with two definition and the very first definition is termed as atomic number this atomic number is also represented by the capital z symbol basically this atomic number z is basically this atomic number z it indicates the total number of protons present in an atom so if we have the idea about the number of protons present in an atom by which by this we can indicate that what is the atomic number for an atom and if we have the idea about the atomic number we can use this atomic number to calculate the number of protons present in an atom for example if i say that an atom has the atomic number 10 then with the help of this value we can find that the nucleus of this atom will contain total 10 protons with the help of this atomic number we can also calculate the second the number of the second fundamental particle that is number of electron since we know that the atom is electrically neutral but how come it but how come it be possible since this atom contain two kind of positively charged particle the one is positively charged particle proton and the second one is negatively charged particle electron this condition can be satisfied only in, uh, only at the one condition where the number of proton should be equals to the number of electron if the positive charge on an atom is equals to the negative charge of an atom means the number of protons for an atom are equal to the number of electrons present in an atom at this condition this positive charge will set will neutralize the negative charge and the overall charge of an atom will be zero so that time we can say that the atom is electrically neutral now from the observation since we know that the atom is electrically neutral so we can say that the atom has the same number of protons as the number of electron so we can use this atomic number to calculate the number of electrons also as in the initial example i have said that the atomic number is 10 and with the help of this atomic number we can find the number of protons that is 10 since in an atom the number of protons are equal to the number of electron so we can also say that this atom will contain total 10 electrons so that is how we can calculate the number of protons and electrons with the help of the definition atomic number now the second third the th last third one particle is left that is the number of neutron and to calculate the number of neutron we will take the help of second definition that is mass number mass number in short is represented by the symbol capital a and if i talk about the definition of mass number or what do we understand by mass number then mass number basically it indicates about the total number of particle which are present in nucleus that is number of protons plus number of neutrons these protons and neutrons which lies in nucleus are commonly known as nucleons so the another way to define the mass number is total number of nucleons is equals to the mass number of an atom now from the last definition as we see as we can see that the number of protons is equals to the atomic number of an atom so the definition of mass number we can also write this as a is equals to number of protons or atomic number that is capital z plus number of neutrons and if we have the idea about the atomic number and mass number so from here from this relation we can find the total number of neutron and the number of neutrons will be equals to a minus z or mass number minus atomic number 
so that is the formula by which we can calculate the number of neutrons present in the nucleus for example if i say that an atom has the atomic number 11 and the mass number for this atom is 23 so with the help of this if i am to calculate the three fundamental particles then the number of protons will be equal to the atomic number that is electron that is 11 the number of electron is equal to the number of protons for an atom and here the number of electrons will be again 11 for the number of neutron we will subtract the atomic number from the mass number and the value will be 23 minus 11 now to find the number of Neutron, we will subtract this atomic number from the mass number and we will, if I subtract the 11 from 23, 23, then the number of neutrons here are 12. So that is how we can calculate the number of electrons, protons and neutrons with the help of atomic number and mass number. Now, it is not so that every time we will be provided the value like this, that the atomic number is this one and the mass number is this one. Sometimes this atomic number and mass number is represented with the symbol of that element. And if the symbol of any element is E, then the value that is written at the left hand side side as the subscript will tell the atomic number of that atom. The mass number is written at the left hand side of the symbol as the superscript. So if the value is written at the left hand side as the superscript, so by reading the value we can know that what is the mass number of an atom. Such as the symbol of helium is HE and if the value at the left hand side as the subscript is written as 2, as the superscript if the value is given as 4. So by reading this value we can know that the atomic number for this atom is 2 and the mass number for this atom is 4 and by knowing these two value we can write that it contains total 2 protons total 2 electrons and the number of neutrons are 4 minus 2 that is again 2 so that is how we can calculate the protons electrons and neutrons now we will take one more important example that is for hydrogen the common representation for the hydrogen is H11 it also exists in different isotopic forms that we will be dealing with later but here if I talk about the total number of fundamental particle for this most common form of hydrogen then the atomic number for this common form is 1 the mass number is also 1 if I calculate the number of protons so that is 1 since the atomic number is 1 the number of electrons are equal to the protons and that is again 1 the number of neutrons are atomic number minus the number of neutrons are mass number minus atomic number and the value is 1 minus 1 and here we find that this hydrogen atom contains no neutrons or it contains zero neutrons. By this we can give the conclusion that hydrogen it is a single element which contain only two fundamental particles electrons and protons and it contains no neutron. Uh, except this hydrogen no any element is there which has no neutron all the elements except hydrogen contains three fundamental particles that is electron proton and neutron and since hydrogen is an exceptional case so it is asked in the competitive exams and that is to memorize that it has only two fundamental particles